All right, welcome everybody. We're going to talk about momentum. We're going to do some practice problems. We're going to talk about the different types of collisions and how they affect conservation of momentum. So we need to identify what different types of collisions we have. We're going to talk about conservation of momentum. There's another conservation law. We have conservation of energy also. And we're going to do some conservation of momentum problem. So the basic definition of momentum is mass times velocity. That's it. Very simple. We use the symbol T, and it's just the mass times the velocity at any point in time. That gives you the momentum. There is the impulse momentum theorem. In order for an object to change velocity, it must accelerate. We know that acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So if the object changes velocity, it must accelerate. In order for an object to accelerate, there must be a net force. This is Newton's second law. In order for acceleration to be non-zero, force also has to be non-zero. So we're going to define a quantity of force applied for a time. So force multiplied by time will give you a change in momentum, which we are defining as impulse with the letter J. All you have to know is that force multiplied by time is change in momentum. So for changing momentum, applying a force, it has to be over a particular amount of time. So let's start. Let's use the impulse momentum theorem. A 1,400 kilo car starts at 15 meters per second and it collides with the utility pole and is brought to rest. What is the force exerted on the car? Well, what we need to know first is we need to know the change in momentum, which is momentum final minus momentum initial. So let's take momentum initial is mass times velocity initial. Our mass 1400 kilos and our velocity initial is 15 meters per second. So that means our momentum initial is 21,000, uh, let's see, what's that? Kilogram meters per second. All right, and now our momentum final is mass times velocity final, which is 1400 times, well, the velocity final, it's brought to rest, so that's zero. So that's zero kilogram meters per second. So our change in velocity is 2100 minus zero, which is 2100, I keep saying 100, 21,000 kilogram meters per second. So what we want is force multiplied by time is change in momentum. What do we have? We have that our time 0.3 seconds. So we know that the force times 0.3 seconds is 21,000. So if we divide by 0.3, we get that the force is 70,000 newtons, which is quite a bit, quite a bit. Which is, that's why you want to bring your car to rest in as much time as possible. If this time is greater, a lot greater, more than 0.3 seconds, you get a much lower force, uh, which means you're going to sustain less damage in that collision. So what are some examples of this? So if you increase the time that an impact, so you increase the time that a change in momentum occurs, it's going to be reducing the force. So safety nets are one thing. When you uh, firefighters need to catch someone jumping out of a burning building, their nets are very, very stretchy, and they take a long time uh, to decelerate you. Also trapeze artists, then they have a safety net. It is very flexy. You want to stretch it out a lot. Crumple zones in cars. So if you allow the car to crumple and absorb a lot of the impact and slow down 
uh, that crash time, so you have a longer crash time, you're going to have less force. If you bend your knees while you jump, it takes more time to hit the ground. And in an egg drop contest, you want to minim uh, maximize the amount of time that it takes for your egg to decelerate. So there's a law of conservation of momentum. So momentum is conserved in collisions. Generally, we're only going to deal with collisions of two objects, more than two, and it gets really wonky and difficult. So we have the first mass times its initial velocity, second mass times its initial velocity. The sum of those is equal to the first mass times its final velocity and the second mass times its final velocity. Really simple. So this is P1 initial, this is P2 initial, P1 final, and P2 final. Why is this the case? Why, why is there conservation of momentum? Why does that even happen in the first place? Well, it's Newton's third law, actually. The force of one on two is equal to the force of two on one. So each object in the collision receives a force. Force times time is change in momentum. So if we have one object receiving a force in one direction, and we have another object receiving a force in the other direction, this one gains a negative change in momentum, and this one gains a positive change in momentum. Therefore, those have to cancel. So we have change in momentum of object one equal to the change in momentum of object two. And so change in momentum of object one plus the change in momentum of object two must equal zero. So this is a conservation law. It will always be true. So let's try this. A 76 kilo boater initially at rest in a stationary boat stepped out of the boat and onto the dock. If the boater moves with 2.5 meters per second to the right, what's the final velocity of the boat? So let's picture our situation. Person, and here is a dock. That's the initial. So at first they are both at rest. And then afterwards, here's our boat. Oh, terrible. Here's our boat. Here's our dock, and the person steps out, and he is moving at a certain speed. Conservation of momentum should tell us instinctually that the boat should move in this direction. If we have positive momentum to conserve, we must also have a gain in negative momentum so that they sum to zero. Let's find out what that might be. So our conservation law, M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial is M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So if they're both at rest at first, they both have an initial velocity of zero, which means the initial momentum is zero. We have mass one, let's use the boater, 76 kilos. The final velocity is two meters per second to the right. We're gonna call that positive. So we have a positive 2.5 meters per second plus a 45 kilo boat with some final velocity. So 76 times 2.5, we have oops, 0 is equal to 190 plus 45 velocity final minus 190 divide by 45 and we get V final is negative 4.22, repeating, meters per second. So, since it is negative 
that means it is to the left. So we were right as the person moves to the right, the boat moves to the left and momentum is conserved. We have two types of collisions that we're gonna talk about when we deal with momentum. We have perfectly inelastic collisions where objects stick together after colliding and we have perfectly elastic collisions where objects collide and then return to their original shapes. So inelastic, they stick. Elastic, they return to their original shapes. So with an inelastic collision, the objects stick together to form a new object. So we can consider them one single object with the same with the sum of their masses after the collision so kinetic energy is not conserved in inelastic collisions when they stick together total energy must be conserved but the energy that they lose the kinetic energy that disappears quote unquote disappears the energy goes into deforming the two objects it takes energy to change the shape of something so that energy comes from the kinetic energy of the two objects. We also have elastic collisions. So in elastic collisions, objects collide and deform but then return to their original shape. An example of this is rubber. Rubber is a very close to perfectly elastic material a lot of the time. You take a nice rubber ball and you throw it at a wall, it deforms but then it reshapes and bounces back. In this case, kinetic energy is conserved. So we have to use the normal conservation of momentum law as seen right here, but we can also use the conservation of energy. And in this case, it's going to be conservation of kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy that each of them start with and the kinetic energy that each of them end with. And we have to take direction into consideration when we're looking at collisions. Kinetic energy is not directional, but momentum is. Momentum is a vector. Kinetic energy is not a vector. So two balls, each with mass two kilos, they have velocities of two and three meters per second collide head on. Their final velocities are two meter per second and one meter per second. Is this collision elastic or inelastic? Well, to figure that out, let's see if we have conserved kinetic energy. So we have two balls, each of mass two kilos. We're gonna write the kinetic energy formulas out. One half mass times velocity squared plus one half mass velocity would be three meters per second squared equals one half mass a velocity we end up with two meters per second squared but we also end up with one that only has velocity of one meter per second so we can see that these cancel right away so over here we end up with nine equals one one half times two is one one squared is one one half times two is one, three squared is nine. Well, guess what? Nine does not equal one. Kinetic energy is not conserved. And if kinetic energy is not conserved, that means it must be an inelastic collision. So some energy was lost into deforming the objects. So, now we're going to practice with a collision. So two cars sticking together after they collide. So two cars stick together after they collide. How fast are they going after the collision? So this is very simple. We're gonna use conservation of momentum. Mass one, V one initial, plus mass two, V two initial, equals mass one plus mass two, V final is we're sticking together so we can consider them one object with the total mass of both. So we have a 500 kilo car moving at 30 meters per second plus a 600 kilo car 
moving at 20 meters per second equals mass 1 plus mass 2, 500 plus 600 times velocity final. So let's find out what we get. 500 times 30, 15,000. 600 times 20, 12,000 equals 1,100, the final. 12,000 plus 15,000, 27,000. So then our final velocity is 27,000 divided by 1,100. We get 24.5. So, it is greater than the 600 kilo car's original velocity, but smaller than the 30 meter per second car. So, we have, basically we're meeting in the middle. They're pretty close in weight, and we're meeting somewhere in the middle. So, conservation of momentum for an inelastic collision. Okay. So this is one that I want you to try at home. So we have one marble moving to the right and it makes an elastic head-on collision with another marble moving to the left at a different speed. And after the collision, the smaller marble moves now to the left at a different speed. So assuming that they neither of them rotate and there's no friction, find the final velocity of the larger marble. And then since this is an elastic collision, kinetic energy should be conserved. So check that kinetic energy is also conserved. If you need more help, come see me. If you want to check your answer, come see me. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.